Hello and welcome. I'm Jenny Hall. Thanks for joining me for another card making tutorial. By special request, I have been asked to recreate the coloring on a card I featured on my blog a few days ago. So I'm going to do the very long coloring process and fussy cutting process for the Blossoming Basket stamp set. I'm stamping in Sahara Sand ink onto Sahara Sand cardstock and I will be coloring with watercolor pencils. The reason I chose to stamp with brown ink on brown paper is because the basket itself to me needs to have some extra depth of color if I want it to give a realistic look. I'm not worried that the florals are going to have a brown undertone because the watercolor pencils are of an intense color and they will definitely not show through as brown but the basket itself is going to have that brown base ink color and it'll have the light brown undertones to the coloring and in the finished result then I would love to hear if you agree that it was wise to stamp on brown versus white. For each one of the roses, I'm going to assume that they are roses, I'm coloring them individually. I want to have them look like they're a part of a setting, but I don't want them to have the same exact colors. I'm blending out the colors with a blender pen, and that's going to activate some of the watercolor pencils and make it more fluid. So as you watch the coloring, notice that I will, when using the blender pen, I will touch the paper and then I will kind of swipe it off on my grid paper. And that's because I don't want to carry through too much color. You can see that now as I am activating the watercolor pencils on this large rose that as I color it, if I didn't take off that extra amount of color, then I would be bringing color over to the next petal that I color instead of bringing over a clean surface that is going to add and blend out the colors. So imagine if I took the blender pen with some pink pencil over onto the green leaf then that kind of gives a little bit of an understanding of why I wipe it off in between. The most questions I had were about the basket piece itself. I will show the fussy cutting because that was quite a subject, but it's the basket itself that I found really captivating to color. So how I approached this was I took the black and the brown pencils from the standard watercolor pencil set and I first used the black pencil to color in the pieces of the basket that would go vertical. That's the, the pieces that would stick up and down and I figured that they would have a darker tone. So I colored them in with black and then I colored everything else in brown. Then I activated the colors with the blender pen and kept the dark tones dark. When I fussy cut this image, you can see that I am moving the scissors and not the paper because I want to get all of those little bumps and grooves that are in the drawn stamped image. And for me to move that paper, it was a little bit, I would say, cumbersome. Also, all of these teeny tiny little floral spray greenery images do not need to come out in my finished project. So instead of painstakingly cutting out the teeny 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 tiny pieces, I just cut them off. And in the finished project, 
I could not notice where they were supposed to be. As you can see, those little pieces are not missing from anywhere. To give some highlights to the project, I'm using the white stamping chalk marker from Stampin' Up. By taking and dabbing in the colors to the center of the rose petals and also on some of the highlight areas, this is an easy way to achieve some highlights and coloring. A clear Wink of Stella pen is just enough shine to give to the petals of the flowers. This is a wonderful brand new basket weave dynamic textured embossed folder. That dynamic really does mean that it is dynamic. Um, aside from the hyperbole, it just really is a really deep cut. It's one of those very thick embossing folders that you need to handle a little differently with your Big Shot die cut machine. So as you try this folder, and I hope that you will because it's marvelous, then make sure that you layer up your sandwich on the Big Shot to handle a dynamic embossing folder. And it's extra thick because it creates three different levels of cutting and embossing. The sentiment is stamped on a scrap of Whisper White in that same Sahara sand ink. And I'm using a sponge dauber to go around the edges of the paper. I'm not giving it a aged or vintage sponge look. What I'm doing is highlighting the edges so that it will stand out away from the white background. So it won't be lost in that white on white look. A piece of linen thread works perfectly to go into a hole that's punched at the top. And now this looks like it's a tag that might have come from a gardener or a nursery or floral shop. And it's something that belongs right in the project. I'm attaching it with some Stampin' Dimensionals directly to the card front and there's no need to attach the bow to the basket since the bow is attached down to the tag itself. This was a really fun card to create and I'm happy to recreate it for you all here and this is a wonderful way that you guys can let me know what you would like me to demonstrate. I'm always happy to share and I welcome any special request. So please feel free to comment and let me know what you think of this project and tell me whether or not you would like this type of project again. Here on the screen you see both of the projects, the one on the right being the one that I created on my blog a few days ago. Thank you so much for joining me for this tutorial. All of the supplies are available today in my online store. All of the links for the products are also in the video description. So you can click show more here on this YouTube channel and it will give you a link to each product. Thank you for your support with your purchases. Without that, I could not continue to make these tutorials, which I love sharing with you all. Thanks so much for joining me today. Thanks for watching the video. See you next time.